Hi there, it's Simon from ScanPro Audio. In this video, I'm going to give you a brief overview of what you can do with Ableton Live, some of the different techniques and the, just the ways and you can organize samples and MIDI. This one I'm going to concentrate mainly on using samples. And I'm going to show you the difference between this screen, which is your session view or clip view, where you can put your clips and basically jam with things, and this view which is the arrangement view, which most people are used to, the more conventional, linear, sort of left to right. There's the, the timeline, this is the, the song position tool moving through, and you're probably used to seeing samples in that way. You can actually add samples, just like any other program, like Cubase, Logic, any of the other sequences are run like this. But the, the main advantage with Ableton is this screen. Now, I'm flicking between the two using the Tab key. You can also use uh, the uh, graphics there which is the horizontal ones are for the uh, arrangement and this is the vertical which is the session so I'm going to concentrate on the screen and show you how to get started by making a track from scratch uh, I'm going to use some uh, drum and bass samples um, it'll help you to see quite easily how I make the track um, you know there's nothing sort of overly complicated about the loops so I'll just show you what you do now first of all you can audition the sample I'm going to use a drum break first uh, this is where you audition your samples. If I open the f uh, the folder, when I click on one of these, it will play the sample to me at, at its tempo. Um, it is. These are 174 beats per minute. So if I play this there, there's my sample. I'm going to use that one because it's not as busy. And I just drag that in and let go of it. If you double click it, um, I'll just show what happens if you double click it opens a new track and puts it right at the top um, I don't need that at the moment but uh, also this is audio and this is MIDI I'm not going to use MIDI in this example so I'm just going to get rid of that so it doesn't confuse anybody um, so you've got audio tracks so you can either drag them in and let go and if you look here it says drop files and devices here anything in Ableton that you uh, select from here just let go and drop it into the space it will either create a new channel or add if it's an effect it'll add it to the existing channel that's highlighted so I'll show you that as we go on anyway so here's a sample now if I press play on this one now what it's done as I've dropped it in Ableton analyzes the tempo and it said it's at 87 so I've got this sample here uh, I want to play other samples um, to try and match it see if they're gonna fit so if this is my drum break I'm gonna press play So I can actually keep that playing and then find a bass line. So I'm going to open the bass line folder, but I'm going to play the drum beat and then try and find one um, that I like. So I'm going to press play now and I can hear the drums alongside uh, a bass line. Now actually these are the same tempo, but if they were different, it would match the tempo of this to the overall project tempo. So this basically means you can get a sample from any style of music from any tempo and it will match it automatically to the project tempo. It's a really good tool for trying different kinds of music with each other. It's completely up to you what you want to do but this is a great way to just try your ideas out and get a track working. So here we go, I'm going to play a uh, bass line, try this one, play the drums as well, sorry. Another one as well. I like that too. So there I've got three bass lines, um, each one slightly different. If you just click it once, it opens up this here, which you can resize if you want to, and you can see the sample. You can see the waveform of the sample. You can do all kinds of things with this. Um, I'll go into more detail with this in another video. So you've got now uh, a drum loop and some kind of bass line. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to play these together, and I'm now going to look for something else. Now if you look at the bass line, um, the ones I used, I've got a C at the end. Now when you're using some of these samples, um, it's helpful if some of them actually put what key they're in. Now Ableton 
can help you to change the key of samples to make them fit together. Um, but if they actually fit in the first place, it is kind of handy. Um, and for this example, I'm trying to keep it simple. So it says C or C minor. So when I go into these uh, music loops, if I look, some of them are actually do say C or C minor. So I'm going to try those just for this example, just to move things on. So I'll press play on the drums. I'm just going to double click it, make a new channel for me. Okay, so now I've got three different channels playing three different types of samples. Now you could rename these um, just by right mouse clicking over the box. You've got rename. The shortcuts are all displayed here, so Control and R would have opened that for me. Uh, if you do learn the shortcuts, you will get to um, use the program a lot quicker and you'll move through things and just keep the creativity going. So in this case, uh, drums. So if I right mouse click there, rename bass, I'll call this one um, keys, because that keyboards. So there's you got three channels. Now one thing you may have noticed, when you drop samples in, um, they always start at the beginning of the next bar. This there is what you call your overall quantize, is set to one bar. So this means whenever you start or stop a sample, it will only come in or drop out on the first beat of each bar. Um, some people think, well that that's cheating, but it's not really, because if you're doing a live performance, it will always be in time. And if you play with other musicians, it helps them to know where beat one is. Uh, when you put your music together, um, it just makes sense to keep the flow. So I'll just show you how that works. If I press uh, play on the bass line, note there's nothing playing here, nothing's lit up. It's just you play the little triangles, and that'll start playing. So if I play this one, if I want the drums to drop in, if you look there, if I put the uh, metronome on, get your heavy beat on the first beat. So what will happen now is if I press play, it will drop it in at the beginning of the next bar. So if I press play now, it's not going to come into it. Again, if I stop it, it won't drop out at the end of this bar. Back in again, three, four. So to stop the sequencer from playing, you just need to press stop or you can press the space bar. At the moment though, if those are lit up like that, those clips are ready to play. So if I press play or space bar again, uh, it would start from one, but the clips would start playing. It'll sound like this. But if you wanted to, um, to play this one and not those two, you'll have to stop the clips. Now any of the square boxes stop, but if you wanted to stop that one and that one together, over here is stop clips. It's a very useful button because it, it basically resets everything. If I press stop clips now, everything is now clear to start playing again. So if I want to play this one now and not those, it just start playing. Okay, so now you've got three channels with different samples in each. One of the main good points about Ableton Live is that you can jam these try which ones work together, organize them, and then just jam them and lay them out. Now, as I mentioned before, you've got this tab key which puts it onto the screen. Now, to get onto here, you could, if you wanted to, click on a sample and just drag it and let go and organize them in a sort of a more traditional format. Um, but you're not really making the best out of Ableton doing that, really. So what we'll do, I'll cut that, go back. What I'm going to do now is organize them just into a basic kind of idea. So if I say which ones work the best by experimenting. So I'm just going to try this one here. So I can leave that playing and I can try the drum beat. So I think those work together. So this is what I'll do. Rather than copy that one down here and copy that one, both of those are ready to play. So what I can do, if I select on the horizontal line here, and these are now called scenes. So if I trigger this 
uh, play button now it will play anything that's in that scene so I want to get that one and that one to appear on this scene now I could right mouse click I can copy I can paste I can duplicate which are all very handy commands but if I want to do it quickly if I had a big set of samples on here and I want to organize them so I want to play this one and that one put it in a new slot you over here right mouse click and it's called capture and insert scene and it can sound quite complicated but basically you're capturing that one and that one and inserting it into a new scene so it's actually easy to see it happen if I put capture and insert scene it will take those two and put them on a new scene so all that means is now if I stop clips if I press play here it plays the, those two together and again they will come in on the next available bar what I like to do is right mouse click and just color it in if I've colored it in red I know that that one if I press play it's a part of a groove or a good starting point so I press play there okay so what I'm going to do here is now I've got this groove that I like I'm going to audition the bass line over it and find which one I want and then create a new scene so I press play here try this Okay, I preferred that one. Now if you look, I press spacebar then, or you can press stop button, and all these samples are ready to play. But I want to just go to the red one here, and if I right mouse click and put capture and insert scene, it will take these that I've already got, plus that one, and make a new scene. And it will insert it directly below wherever you are. So if I right mouse click there, capture insert scene, I've now got another scene underneath so now what you can do is you can start to play between those two and again it will only drop it in on the bar and rather than trigger just one sample you trigger in as many channels if you've got open I've only got three here but you could have as many as your computer can handle so I press play here got the drums and the, and the keys now it's drums, keys and bass I'll drop it in So what you could do now, if I wanted to just say, just have that one playing, um, if I stop all clips, I don't need to copy the whole scene, but if I click on this sample, I just put duplicate, which will just duplicate that one below. It's quicker than copy and pasting. So now if I wanted to drop to just that keyboard, I could play this one. So I'll right mouse click and I'll color these in. And you could title these like introduction, no, verse, chorus, whatever what style of music you're using, you obviously use terms but again it's right mouse click rename you know and you could put intro whatever you want to do I think color coding is quite good if you're working with someone and you just want to say play the red bit again or the green bit because you might not have names for them so just a quick example of what we're doing here press play well together and you might want to use a quick break drop the drums in one two three four okay so you're starting to get a little bit of a, a pattern that you like now the whole purpose of using this screen is when you've got everything in place is to record it onto this screen all you need to do is press record make sure everything's stopped and at one or whatever you want to start from if you want to start from nine you just move it to nine but we'll start from one um, so you press record and as soon as you then press anything that's play um, it will start playing. If I started to, if I click that one there now, it would play all these three. But as I said before, we want to stop clips and start from nothing. So I'm going to start with this keyboard on its own. So I'm going to let that go for a few bars. If I press my tab key, you can see it's recording on this screen there. Uh, you can zoom in slightly like that, and this one follows. So we'll follow it there. You can see I'm going to drop it in on the uh, eighth bar, or the end of the eighth bar. So I'm going to go for that and the drums. Okay, so even when I was dropping that in now, it's, well, it's recording everything I'm doing, including me fading the volume down here. 
I'll stop it there, press the tab key, and you can see that's what I actually did. Now, I left it quite late here, dropping in, so once you're recorded on this screen, you can then um, edit your structure. So I wanted to really um, have dropped this bit in. If you see there, that's kind of the end of a loop. If I want to get rid of that, I literally just highlight it. I can press delete, and it will leave a gap. And then there's a lot of different techniques here. I'll just keep it simple, just pick it up and drag it across. Um, there's lots of little shortcuts to edit the time, delete time. And even if I wanted to go from that, I decided, well, there's no point in that. I just want to jump straight to that. Again, you can just highlight the bits you want. You can right mouse click and delete, and then move it across. So I just deleted that time. I'm just going to pick it up and move it. And then also, if you look, if I go to my master there, that's how I fade the volume out. In some of the videos, I'll show you how to use automation, which is basically saying when you want the volume to fade in and out. And you, once you've got everything in place on the screen, you can basically, it's like having a, a sort of digital mixer. You can set it to do things automatically rather than you on the faders moving things up and down. So basically, everything that you record um, movements, tracks in and out on this screen is recorded onto the arrangement screen. I'll be doing some other videos showing you what other features Ableton has and how can you can incorporate them into your recordings and your ideas. Uh, this is just a simple way to get started and just have a look at some of the things that Ableton does. There's still quite a lot of things um, around on these little menus and stuff so I'll go through those in other videos. So I hope that gives you a good start and an idea of the sort of thing you can do with Ableton. Okay, thanks a lot.